Let's bring him out. This guy's fucking hilarious. Hi, Tonight Show, episode 20, season finale. This boy's a dangerous man, by the way. He's dangerous, all right? You might have heard of him. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Cooper Lighty! Yeah! Oh, my God. Good to be here. Good to be here. This is exciting. Oh, man, that's exciting. Wow. Look at us. Looking into the audience. See, this is what you got to do. You look off and away so people think you got a big room. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it's good to be here. We got black excellence over here, and we got white averageness on stage. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, all right. Oh, it's good to be here. You're like the Johnny Carson of Koreatown. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Murdering. There's a huge studio, too. How's that not been said yet? Johnny Cannabis. Right? <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Cannabis. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I'm a dumbass. I'm happy to be here. I was driving on the freeway, and I went under a freeway overpass, had a protest poster on it that said, no ice, like it's protesting everything that's happening at the border. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I yelled out very happily what I thought it said, which was, uh, noise. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, was, I was real happy for about 15 minutes. And then I uh, thought back and realized there's a very definite space between the O and the I. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to be noise. <laughs> you know, it's just a fun metaphor for how a white guy can have a real problem in front of his eyes, but he'll still flip it so it's fun for him. You know, just, <laughs> just find your beach. That's what this shit's about. This is <laughs> just stay ignorant for as long as you can. That's a white motto. That's how we do it, man. That's how we do it. I'm not listening to anybody. No, okay. <laughs> Can't tell me what to do. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's my brand. Uh, that's who I am. That's what I do. Uh, I don't get why Alcoholics Anonymous makes keychains. I don't understand it. They're an anonymous group. They're an anonymous group, and they brag about it with accessories, which doesn't doesn't make any sense. And also, it doesn't just say you're in AA. It says how long you've been in AA. So it's like, how good are you at being sober? Like it's just. <laughs> It's an invitation for bullying is what it is. I don't know. <laughs> mm, there is just too much shit to riff off. I just need to stay straight ahead or I'll just not be able to have a set. Okay. This is good. This is fun. I uh, I overheard a white guy today. He was in an argument with his friend. His, and his friend, who was not white, he was like, hey, man, you're being kind of racist. And then the white guy came back with, uh, yeah, well, I'm one-eighth Cherokee. And uh, don't say that if you're white. Uh, don't do it because it makes you and your whole family look way more racist. Because uh, if you're one-eighth Cherokee and you're white, that just means someone in your family raped a Cherokee. That's all that, oh, that's all that means. You shouldn't be bragging about it, Chief. It's, it's a blemish on the family record. I don't know. Within the last eight years, too. Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's real bad. I don't know. We, we like qualifiers. We like to try and find ways to be part of stuff. It's fun. Uh, it's, it's ruining the world, but it's fun. It's fun. Poor Silver Lake. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, we're having fun. I, uh, I'm pretty sure I got molested and forgot about it uh, because I. Uh, here's my theory. Here's what's going on. I watched the movie what? Tusk for the second time. I don't know if you guys know Tusk. Uh, it's about a guy who gets kidnapped, raped, and surgically mutilated into a walrus. And uh, I watched the entire what? movie... Without realizing I'd already seen it. It's a very confusing setup, I understand. <laughs> the thing is, it's a it's a walrus suit made out of mostly other people's faces, and uh, he's trapped in it. The point is, I watched the entire movie without realizing I'd already seen it a month before. That's like a built-in skill of repression. Like, that was my mind's first thought. It's like, just bury it away. So I finished the movie, and I was like, what the fuck has happened to me? Like, what has... Happen. Why don't I like being hugged? You know? I don't know. Why am I having feelings? Exactly. It's, a lot of shit's coming up. I don't know. I'm really working out more than jokes up here. I got a lot to handle. I don't know. It's weird. I like movies, though. I don't like talking to people that watch too many movies. Uh, a lot of dudes, mostly dudes that look like me, uh, will just try and ruin movies for you. Like, I think if you watch too many movies, you just want to ruin movies for people. Because I was talking to a guy... And I mentioned that I like Forrest Gump, 
and then uh, he came back immediately with, Forrest Gump's a shit movie! And I was like, all right, that is too much aggression for a movie about a retarded guy. Uh, that is way too much hate for a guy overcoming adversity. But uh, let's, let's have this conversation. So I was like, why is Forrest Gump such a shit movie? And then he was like, well, obviously it's completely unrealistic. That's why we all like the fucking movie. No one wants to see a realistic Forrest Gump. My grandfather's sister was a realistic Forrest Gump. Which means she lived in the basement and died at 51. Is that, is that the summertime romp you want to see? No, no one... No one wants to see the Forrest Gump where Jenny calls Forrest retarded. Like, that's not <laughs> fun for anyone. That's not cool at all, you know? I don't fucking, I don't know. I don't get it. I, I don't know what's more fucked up. The fact that I said that she lived in the basement and died at 51, or the fact that that is completely true. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's... Oh, shit. The last one. Yeah, she lived. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, she lived. She lived in the basement. Wow. She died in the basement. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, we got to see the crime. I mean, it's sad, but that's all they knew how to do with them back then. That's <laughs> just a just a comedy. Just a quick comedy tip: if you're uh, referring to a group of marginalized people, always say them. It's t totally uh, okay to do. Uh, everyone feels good about it all the time. Uh, you can take it from a 19-year-old white kid. You can take it from those uh, people. Yeah, those people is definitely good. That's people love that. I don't know. I'm not. Im I'm not impressed by knowledge of music or art most of the time. It's not hard to get. You just watch shit. Like I was. Like if someone tells me that they know every lyric to every Biggie song ever, my first thought isn't like, "Wow, that's amazing." It's like, wow, you could have fucking learned Spanish or some shit. Like, you had, you had all that time. You could have downloaded Audible. That's like a mini series right there or something. I don't know. Is Like, all knowing every lyric to every Biggie song means is that you ruined Biggie for everyone around you. That's all. You're just trying to hang out, and then Brian just, it was all a dream. You're like, what? We're getting high in the back of a Corolla in the valley. What are you doing? Like, why? <laughs> I relate to him. It's like, your dad is in real estate. What are you, what are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know. Boy, do I have stories about white people. Boy, do... Okay. Uh, I could go on for hours. I don't know. I'll leave you with this. Too do long it. of a joke. Uh, I, uh... I think everyone's trying to help the world. I think the problem is everyone has different ideas of what ought to be and how to get there. And so there's conflict. Because for the most part, everyone who's trying to help the world does in some small way. But there are some bad apples, you know? Because, like, some people are vegan, some people recycle. But some people beat the shit out of trans people, and that is bad. That is bad. I'll call it out right now. And uh, I don't understand. I don't understand beating the shit out of a trans person, because that person doesn't understand how much longer their road to self-actualization is, especially compared to a white dude like me. Like, as a white guy, all I need to do to come into my full form is buy a flannel I like. And that is it. And people are proud of you, and you get pats on the back. A trans person, to be who they need to be, they have to cut their fucking dick off muzzle. Tom, wow. That's, I can't imagine that kind of courage. I cannot imagine that. A trans person knows who they are so much that they can say fuck you to not only the world, but their own body. Which I can't even do when I'm kind of hungry. And that might not make a lot of sense to you because I'm skinny, but I throw up a lot. <laughs> I can't imagine that kind of courage. We think gang members are tough. Do you realize there would be no gang violence if the initiation get into a gang was to cut your fucking dick off? <laughs> it would just be three dudes like Southside Stumps. What's up? Like, it wouldn't be a thing, you know? A lot of initiations are to kill a person. Which means people would rather kill a person then cut their dick off. <coughs> it's like, I don't know. And that's a fun joke because it's a pro-trans joke, but you cannot tell. You know, this has the right message, but it still makes white women uncomfortable. And, uh, it's fine, but it's safe to do here because white women wouldn't come within 100 yards of this place. <laughs> Seems to be the case. All right, why not finish on a way too politically charged joke in a garage? You know what I mean? Thank you so much, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Cooper Lider! Yeah! One of our youngest performers.